So if you've been on the fence about a doorbell camera, you haven't really decided if you want one, but you didn't want to break the bank, and you also wanted one that wasn't stuck in the cloud. There's motion at the door. And had some local control and integration with Home Assistant or Blue Iris or whatever type of NVR you had. Well, let's check out the Amcrest Wi-Fi doorbell camera. So I have been on the fence for a while about, hey, I just don't need a doorbell camera. I've got plenty of other cameras around the house. You know, we got PTZ cameras and everything else and different Eve and multiple angles. But there's just something about having that eye level view of the person that comes to the door, as well as being able to get motion notifications. But as you can see, I really wish sometimes I had a different angle. This candid shot, I really wished I had a doorbell camera at this time. That would have just been golden to get this different angle and definitely see this guy's reaction of his face a little bit better. I said I probably would not use doorbell cameras, but I can tell you now, I want both of my doors to have doorbell cameras because I just can't go back at this point. For full disclosure, Amcrest did send this camera out for view, but as you know in the past, I always speak my mind and tell it like it is, whether it's garbage or whatever it might be. But I'll just jump to it right now. I was so excited after getting this product installed and integrated and various things, I ordered me a second one with my own funds because I enjoyed it so much. Now, of course, we will leave all the links down in the description of the video down below, as well if there's any coupon codes available for the camera too. So definitely check those out. It helps us out and I appreciate it. So the Amcrest Wi-Fi Video Doorbell. 1080p, two-way talk, and motion alerts, as well as includes two face plates, the black and the silver. Works with iOS and Android. So inside the box, we get all the literature that probably we won't be using. We'll put that to the side. We have the video doorbell itself, as well as a few accessories. You've got a Wago 221, very nice, along with these different screws and the jumper wires, the wire nuts. You got anchors. Pretty cool. They do give you a screwdriver to use. As well as you do get the chime kit. We'll cover that later. You do get your silver faceplate with the chime kit wire, as well as they do give you a masonry bit. Very cool. So on the doorbell itself, see if we can get it without getting a glare in the camera. There is a PIR sensor up top, as well as there's two IR sensors and a wide angle lens. And then there's a button on the front for your typical doorbell, as well as there's an illuminated ring around the edge. And of course the microphone and the speaker. And once you take off the bracket, there is a label with all your unique Mac IDs and the IDs to scan. And I covered mine up just so we, uh, no one else would be scanning those into their app. So you can pull the faceplate off. And another cool thing they thought of, which I did have to cover up as well, there's another QR code because, of course, people are going to be installing this on their wall and they cannot scan the thing on the back. They'll have the simple QR code if they just pop the faceplate off. Pretty cool idea. On the side is your reset button, which you'll be using to pair it to the app, as well as if you pull up the little rubber flap, there is the slot for your micro SD card, and we're gonna put a 128 gig micro SD card inside. I did have an issue if you had it formatted with EXFAT, then it wouldn't recognize it, and I had to make sure and format it as FAT32. So simply push the SD card in and fold the flap down and now you have storage where it records the events on the doorbell itself as well as you can use RTSP and the cloud storage with this because you know you don't want to have all of your video recordings in just one spot. And just to see what it looks like with the silver faceplate. So you still get the black lens, the black button, and of course this is silver and maybe it might help someone see that button a little bit easier at times with the silver faceplate. It may match something with your house. So pretty cool they did include which faceplate you want. And if you really wanted to, you could pop the faceplate off and paint it whatever color you like. So let's go get this thing installed and see what it does during the day and during the night. 
So without dwelling on all the aspects and the technical specifications of the camera itself, you can read them while I ramble on about various things. Of course, it does use the voltage for your old school doorbell, as well as use the wiring. It does use 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It does not have five gigahertz, unfortunately, but it, this is a good price point for this camera, especially at 1080p with night vision, as well as micro SD card for local storage, and as well as RTSP. So I'm glad Amcrest got the message on adding RTSP to this camera, as well as for the Home Assistant users, we can integrate it in, straight into Home Assistant and grab a few binary sensors as well, which we'll get to. So Amcrest has a install video that we really just can't compete with. They did such a great job with it. And we'll show a little bit of our install and talk about some of the issues we have, but we'll leave a link down to their install video as well. So definitely check that one out, it's great quality. Now, one issue I had with my particular camera is due to a lot of homes in my area are using a brick facade. And typically the wood frame will be set in a few inches from the brick itself, as shown in some of the pics here. The one issue that causes is the IR lights will actually light up the brick too much and it will blow out the iris on the camera itself and then you just really can't see anything at night. So do keep that in mind when you're looking at your particular installation area where your doorbell is installed. Now, but one thing, this camera does not come with a wedge that would actually pivot it out, say 15 or 25 degrees, etc. But luckily there are some smart individuals out there already made some pretty cool wedges that will bring that camera away from the wall and correct a lot of the issues you may have. And you can print those out at say your local library or you can get someone locally if you don't have a 3D printer yourself to print that out for you. So we did, we wanted to do a few tests and of course we use one of these sophisticated mounting brackets that we designed. And we took a few shots from the front door cause I was looking at maybe getting one as well as where I did install it on the back. So the install is pretty simple. Now, one issue I did run into was as soon as we plugged in and turned things back on, turned the breaker on, well, this happened. Yeah, the wife thought I was constantly pushing the doorbell button, just trying to piss her off, but really wasn't trying to do that to her today. What it was, it was just the doorbell transformer was too small. It was a 5VA doorbell transformer. It just old and it had been with the original one for the house. And it just was not gonna work with any type of video doorbell. So we replaced it with 30VA and everything was golden after that. And definitely check out your transformer before you order your Amcrest doorbell camera. So once you get the camera installed, it's pretty simple to pair it up with the actual Amcrest Smart Home app. Of course, it's pretty cool. They did leave that QR code on the front. So in case you did forget to scan it and pair it before you mounted it. So pretty simple. It walks you straight through you by scanning the QR code and adding to your Wi-Fi like you've done with a bunch of other home automation devices. So if you click it, it automatically will pull up and you can do, like I said, you can do the multi view if you wanted to pull in multiple cameras. As well as you can go ahead and turn on the talk. You can change it to high definition. You can also listen. It'll turn the speaker on. You can take snapshots. Pretty simple stuff. Doesn't really need a tutorial to do it. It's straightforward. So in the settings, you do get all your device information, such as your IP address for adding to RTSP later. Take note of that. Now for the chimes, when you go ahead, you can link in your digital mechanical chime. That will still allow your internal doorbell to work like it was before. And that way you don't lose any functionality with this. Now, one thing I did find, even though I had a mechanical chime, it wasn't ringing the doorbell, but when I changed it to digital, it worked just fine. So I'll go figure as long as it works, right? So for the call notification, well, when someone pushes that button, you'll get a notification on your phone to answer the call and talk to the user on the other side. Of course, for storage status, you can put up to a 128 gig card. Of course, we wanted to try that out. Well, works great. Formatted the card as FAT32 
and it stores all of our recordings locally on the card itself. 128 gigs, a lot of storage for some doorbell videos. And don't forget, you do have cloud storage as well at the same time. Now we did sign up for the cloud storage and there is a free tier just to try it out for one year. Definitely check that out. Doesn't hurt. You can put it in the cloud. If not, you don't have to opt in. You can make the cloud not be on for the recordings. As well as, of course, we did mention you have RTSP. So you've got three options that you can use at the same time. You can do RTSP, cloud, and microSD at the same time for all of your recordings. Firmware update, Wi-Fi settings, not going to go into those, real simple. But for motion detection, you can set the schedule for the different days you want. And you can set the motion range or the actual PIR sensor on it. Now for the motion detection zones, I saw they were talking about an app update and a firmware update, but I haven't seen it yet where it has different zones where you can select different areas of motion to notify you. Mine's only showing one zone at this time, but maybe a future app update it will. This is your typical deal where you set the squares where you want your motion detection to pick up. And doorbell, tone and volume, typical thing. You set the doorbell chime, that's how loud it's gonna be outside as well as the speaker when you're talking to the person. And then you can change the little ringtones per se of what happens when you push the doorbell. And yes, you do get the, of course we mentioned the cloud recordings. Really simple stuff, it does put the lines and you just simply go through and pick the recording you want and it pulls from the cloud. So to go pick a different recording, you just slide over Find the line you want and pick it and let it play and enjoy the wonderful video footage on the doorbell itself. Now, while we're in here, one thing I did want to mention, and I really wish Amcrest would do in light of all the different hacking news we've seen recently with Ring and various other cameras, I would really like to see them put in two-factor authentication right here in the application. That way it gives you that extra layer of security. So for all you Home Assistant users, you're in for a treat. The Amcrest integration works for the most part. It's very cool. As you can see, you do get your Lovelace streaming card. It is the live streaming of the actual doorbell camera since it does support RTSP. Straight out of the box, Amcrest integration with Home Assistant. As well as you do get your binary sensors for the online. And the big kicker is you do get your binary sensor for the motion detection straight off of the camera and local and it's quick. So you can drive all your various automations to grab video footage or turn lights on or whatever you may want to do with your home automation software. Now, as of the recording of this video, you do not have the binary sensor for the doorbell button itself. Now, hopefully Amcrest will add that in the future. Definitely ask them about it as I have and possibly it will get exposed in the SDK and we can get it added into Home Assistant. That would be awesome. That would make it the doorbell to have for Home Assistant. So pretty simple stuff with the Home Assistant integration. It's pretty straightforward. Throw in the IP address, username and ID, and it comes right in. So I'm glad Amcrest listens to their users and added RTSP to this camera. Originally, I didn't do the review on this camera because it did not have any type of local control. But now that they've added RTSP to the camera, well, that's why you're watching this video. And there it is. Live view of your doorbell camera straight into Blue Iris. And of course, you could use various other solutions for recording RTSP streams. Doesn't take any type of hackery or whatever, or looking up stupid paths or copying and pasting, whatever. Throw in the IP address that we mentioned off in the app. Put your username, your password you set up, hit the find and spec button. That's it. You're done. And boom, your camera will be straight up. You can do your recordings, your triggers for automations of motion or whatever it might be. And do all your recordings of that doorbell straight into your MVR, such as Blue Iris. So all in all, a great product. I know you're not about to close the video just yet because you always watch all the outros, right? Now, of course, I was excited about this product. After I installed it on the back door, I definitely knew I had to have one on the front door. It's got some great video quality, great snapshots, especially for this crazy price point compared to other video doorbells. 
And there's just nothing like having that video down below at eye level. You can get better detail of the faces. And I was really impressed with, even with a lot of light coming in the side, I was worried that I was going to get some blown out faces. Now, I did have to blur this face here of this individual, but that was done intentionally, but I was able to see his exact face, and it wasn't just a dark silhouette or shadow. And kudos to Amcrest for doing also the local control. But hey, if you really want to do a cool feature in your cameras, in all of your cameras, do some MQTT integrations. That way we could send some commands to them and also get the binary sensors straight over MQTT and integrate them straight into Home Assistant or whatever type of home automation software we might have. It definitely opens up the world of what you can do and who you can sell the cameras to. It's a one-stop shop and sell it to all types of the user bases out there and making it the go-to cameras. So Amcrest, if you're watching, definitely hit me up. Let's have a talk about putting MQTT in your cameras. So that about wraps it up. Definitely a thumbs up in my book for this camera. It definitely didn't have to meet the fate of the wonderful hammer, but that'll live another day, I'm sure. We'll see some more. So I appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. Definitely helps bring additional content, products, projects, whatever it might be every week to the channel. And come check us out in the Discord link down below. If you get stuck on something with your different home automation software or need some recommendations, a camera, or you want some hot deals of things that are going for good prices, whatever it might be, or if you just want to share your food pictures, and definitely share our video, give us a like, give us a thumbs down, whatever it might be, give us a comment, let us know what's going on, and y'all take care.